all the Little House books that we will review in this course from Little House in the Big Woods to On the Banks of Plum Creek are now considered middle grade novels. There isn't a definitive definition of a middle grade novel, but for the purposes of this class, let's think of them as works of fiction written for young readers, usually between ages 8 and 12. Now, this definition seems very clear, right? Uh, but it isn't exactly. If you go online, you'll find several similar but slightly different definitions. Some experts maintain that middle grade novels are directed to young readers ages 9 to 11. Others argue that middle grade novels target children ages 7 to 12. So, as you can surmise, this is a moving target. In fact, as we'll see in part two of this class, the young adult category seems to shift as well. The John Newberry Medal is an annual literary award granted by the American Library Association to identify and honor the most distinguished books of a given year directed to young readers in the middle grade category. This is the 2014 winner, and there were four honor books this year as well. And yet, the book many critics and scholars characterize as the classic middle grade novel, Charlotte's Web, didn't win a Newbery Medal. It was an honor book in 1953, as was a book written by one of my old friends, Moccasin Trail, by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. The winner in 1953 is a book that very few people remember now, Secrets of the Andes by Anne Nolan Clark. And yet, Charlotte's Web is a classic in the genre, a near-perfect novel. Of course, none of Laura Ingalls Wilder's books won a Newbery Medal either. Several were honor books, including On the Banks of Plum Creek. Awards often reflect transitory issues, ideas, and trends of any given year. Classic children's books like Charlotte's Web and On the Banks of Plum Creek transcend trends. They are timeless. So, what makes a memorable middle grade novel? And how does this category fit into the larger category of books for young readers? Let's start with a few basic categories. If you look at the American Library Association Book Awards for young readers, three clear categories emerge. Picture books with the Caldecott Medal, Middle Grade with the John Newberry Medal, and Young Adult with the Michael J. Prince Medal. By the way, all of these categories include fiction as well as nonfiction titles and multiple genres, everything from historical fiction to contemporary to sci fi and fantasy. But the Caldecott Medal is awarded to an illustrator, not a writer because, as we'll see in a moment, pictures, not words, are the primary form of communication in a picture book. But in recent years, two other markets have emerged. So here is a general listing of categories for children and young readers, along with very basic definitions. Board books for children three years old and younger. These are books that are usually printed on cardboard for durability with very little text usually no more than 300 words, and strong visual content. An example of a classic board book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. Picture books, ideally for children four to eight. These books rely primarily on illustration to convey the story. These are often books that adults read aloud to the children in their lives. An example of a classic picture book, Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are. By the way, he shared an editor at Harper & Brothers with Laura Ingalls Wilder and E.B. White, the incomparable Ursula Nordstrom. Easy readers for children five to eight who are just starting to read on their own. These are very short books with strictly prescribed vocabulary and syntax guidelines for writers. For example, writers of easy readers can't use contractions. Pictured here is an easy reader book published by my friend Carmen T. Bernier Grand, Juan Bobo, for folk tales from Puerto Rico. These books, by the way, are often called chapter books. 
middle grade books for children 8 to 12 who are confident readers. More about this definition momentarily. As I've already mentioned, Charlotte's Web and On the Banks of Plum Creek fall within this category. So too do the early Harry Potter books. J.K. Rowling begins the series in middle grade territory and then as Harry ages and matures, Rowling moves into the YA category. As we'll see in part two, Wilder did the same thing with her Little House books. And finally, young adult books. For young readers 12 and older, these books are often very complex and deal with more mature themes. We'll discuss this category in detail in part two of this class. When Wilder was writing the Little House series in the 1930s and early 1940s, children's publishing wasn't quite this sophisticated. The Newbery Medal was established in 1921 and its first awards were granted the following year in 1922, just 10 years before the publication of Little House in the Big Woods. The Caldecott Medal was established in 1937 and awards were bestowed to illustrators beginning in 1938. As for the Michael J. Prince Award for young adult books, it was established only recently, in 2000. Remember how Lane identified this book? She called it a juvenile. And that was the term often used to describe books for young readers, juvenile fiction or juvenile nonfiction. Yet Wilder's first five Little House books correspond to contemporary ideas about middle grade fiction. Here, for example, are a few sound bites from a recent online discussion on the topic. Middle grade books feature preteen characters in situations of interest to 8 to 12 year olds with an accessible voice that truly speaks to the reader and doesn't talk down to them. This definition clearly applies to Wilder and her work. Middle grade and young adult describe audiences, not genres, because a tremendous variety of books fall in each category. The core audience for middle grade is 8 to 12 year olds, and young adults is 12 to 18. I say core audience because readers of all ages enjoy these books, but the writing has to speak to kids and or teens first. Wilder's writing is, of course, timeless. Readers of all ages find meaningful ideas in her work. And just one more quotation from this illuminating online discussion. Middle grade is generally shorter than YA, though that can vary, to account for younger children's short attention spans. And though it doesn't necessarily shy away from tough subjects, it generally avoids the graphic depiction of them. So, for example, Charlotte's Web deals not only with the discovery and meaning of friendship, it also examines the subjects of loss and death. These are very tough themes indeed. When Wilder was writing in the 1930s and 1940s, juvenile fiction, in all its various manifestations, avoided graphic depictions of all kinds. And as we'll see later, Wilder's scenes of what was considered gritty or difficult subjects came under close scrutiny from her editor Ursula Nordstrom at Harper and Brothers. In general, contemporary middle grade and young adult fiction is far grittier and far more graphic than books published for the same audiences in the early to even late 20th century. Children's books and publications in the United States can, in part, trace their history back to religious periodicals of the early 19th century. Such publications as Sabbath School Visitor, which poet Emily Dickinson read as a child in the late 1830s and early 1840s. Two features stand out for the modern reader, the drive to convert young children and the emphasis on illness, physical dismemberment, and early death. Dickinson's biographer then goes on to summarize several stories that appeared in the Sabbath School Visitor. March brought an infant missionary's dying gift, which told of Frederick Dewey and how he fell into a barrel of boiling water at the age of three and then gave the missionaries all he had, 60 cents, before expiring. In April and May, there was another two-part story, 
the New Year's present about a pious dying boy who marked a great many verses in his Bible for his unconverted brother. June and July had the moving tale of Abigail E. Dwight, who loved her Sabbath school lesson but suffered from an enlargement of the heart, and when her father came it was too late. She was a corpse and dressed for the grave. You get the idea. Much of the literature in the United States for young readers prior to the American Civil War focused on harrowing religious themes and sentimental plots. Although Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin was written for adults in 1852, its image of little Eva and her angelic death, which inspires adult characters in the books to attempt to lead better lives, is consistent with themes in children's publications of the period. After the Civil War, books for children continued to have didactic themes and Christian overtones. Still, many librarians were concerned that reading fiction was not a wholesome pastime for children. The voracious devouring of fiction commonly indulged in by patrons of the public library, especially the young, is extremely pernicious and mentally unwholesome. Of course, one book began to transform the reading tastes of American children and their parents, Little Women, published in 1868. We'll talk more about this book in part two of this class, but it ushered in a new period of American children's literature and opened the door for books that weren't so overtly moralistic or didactic, culminating in Mark Twain's books for young readers in the late 19th century. We'll talk more about this book in part two of Laura Ingalls Wilder, her work and writing life.